Hello everyone, welcome to our initiative daily news analysis and uh, we cover the Hindu newspapers Delhi edition. Now we have two news in the front page which are important, not really actually but we have to make it important for the upcoming mains 2022 examination. Okay, so one we get the issue of this TV anchor who is associated with sharing a false video, right, so false video of Rahul Gandhi. So we get the issue of the need to regulate the media, media and fundamental rights and more import importantly the fake news and should is fake news part of one's freedom of speech and expression right so this is very very important the so fake news hate news and all those things moving besides this one more issue we can get you see in Uttar Pradesh it should be Uttar Pradesh police who is taking action but we have police coming from Chhattisgarh a congress controlled state uh, you know within congress controlled state so police is under their control they go to Uttar Pradesh so this is one instance it could have been any other, other state but it is the congress controlled state likewise we find BJP ruled you know FIRs etc taking place from the BJP ruled state if something happens so now arises the question of the objectivity of the police force the autonomy of the police force. We also had the issue of custodial death, custodial custody, custodial torture. So the need to bring in police reforms, we can look at it from this point of view. What are the main suggestions that have been given to bring in police reforms? Refer the Prakash Singh judgment case, right? So that is very, very important. Okay, now we are done with this. Moving on to the next article, Centre to soften punitive steps in environment cases. So with reference to environment, most of the regulation associated with environment is coming from the Environment Protection Act. Now in this, there was a clause, certain clause, which said that those violators, people who have violated the norms and regulations that have been stipulated in the Environment Protection Act they may be arrested they may be imprisoned for up to five years or they may also be fined so the industry and certain other people they said that this is creating a fear amongst them the fear of imprisonment even for simple violations naturally so this was the thing so now center naturally they are looking at softening the punitive steps so the idea of imprisonment is being struck down so this is one change that is taking place and the second major change is that there will be an appointment of an adjudication officer who would decide on the penalty in cases of environment violations okay now i was going through the previous years of environment yesterday we did this um, geography and environment in the mission mains also so one line of question you know one line one way by which the UPSC can ask questions is comparing the draft policy for example the updated policy with the previous policy the pros and cons something like that so comparative approach in fact today we'll be doing the uh, the policy on draft policy on disabled rights okay so this we can keep in mind Next we have, uh, we had a lot of this uh, news uh, uh, then from, but for exam point of view, not very important. Then over here we get the issue of fake news. So BJP should not feed in, so we can't really use this. But yes, we have the issue of fake news, which he discussed. Then we have a matter of import. So the yesterday's news that we had discussed, it's the same converted in the editorial format. Okay, handcuffing a judicial tap and the long term, long arm of the law something to do with handcuffing something to do with how the criminals have to be treated at least from this handcuffing point of view so again i don't find this important coming to this article indian aviation needs a strong and steady tailwind we can look at it this way from the point of view of economy like from economy we can go to indian economy and particular sector so what are the issues ailing the aviation sector? 
what are the issues associated so and we also have a scheme of the central government known as udan ude desh ka aam nagrik regional connectivity scheme so we can actually link this up together now this opinion page over here is telling us about his story actually what all he did and all the achievements he had so it's not it required it is only somewhere over here that we give get things of importance from the exam point of view that's his story you like to read it you read it you have extra time read it okay so we have this ude desh ka aam nagrik which prime minister uh, popularly said that he his vision is that a aam nagrik a person wearing hawaii chappal normal slippers can travel in the air it is no more the privilege of the rich and the elite okay so we have this some praise has to be done before coming to the criticisms of the government that's what the author is doing okay now he tells us some problems associated with the aviation sector so one he says is, is that the cargo handling ability of the airport is very very limited so he says hong kong airport alone handles more cargo than all of india now you can use this you know how this expression uh, highlights makes it more important shows the urgency okay more cargo than india's 100 airports then the problems with the cargo handling infrastructure so this the prime minister has been working also so there is the scheme known as the sagar mala initiative do read about it it is about linking the ports with basically multimodal connectivity so port with road roadways to rails so everything to be in one point so that is the idea that is what this this one is also saying integrating with road rail and port infrastructure so air cargo should be integrated then nationally the aviation fuel taxes is very very high right so normal petrol diesel is anyways very high it's very very highly taxed aviation fuel is taxed even more because even now the government feels that aviation is a luxury item it should be taxed at a higher rate despite the government's own program known as ude desh ka aam nagrik initiative where it wants the common people to travel by air so this is a well known thing they are actually saying that this should come under the ambit of gst first step okay then the issue of maintenance repair and overhaul so mro so all these planes that are being imported to a country or taking on taken on lease from boeing at all these companies all these airlines are taking so naturally they have to be maintained they have to be repaired some improvisation has to be done now ideally this should take place in india only so this should take place in india and we should have that type of capacity that we are actually the global power by which people from other countries airlines from other countries are also coming to india for the mro services so that should be the idea but what is happening is that despite having the technicians dis despite having lot of people know how etc we are actually going outside the airlines prefer to get their work from outside mro work why because of taxes labyrinth labyrinthine taxes means very complicated like a maze it's very very difficult very complex so taxes customs and duties rules that have to be followed so you know even if they have to get a spare part for servicing a particular plane that spare part would be taxed at a very high rate so that makes it very very difficult to naturally it's getting imported the government wants the spare parts to be made in india but then the imports are getting very expensive so the airlines feel so much hassle why do why shouldn't we go outside and get our planes serviced so they prefer to go abroad to dubai singapore germany etc and it costs more actually to send your equipments over there where indian te technicians are only employed so this is ironic that when there are thousands of pi uh, pilots and technicians are unemployed in a country we are following the system okay then the issues with the india's aircraft act and aircraft rules so this has to be rectified to ease the regulation work ease the operations of the aviation uh, airlines etc okay we don't have to go into the depth of things 
so it then the next is india has not kept pace with the modern technology in aerospace so we have limited r and d and the regulators are not fine so we have not done much in the r and d sector then we have to reform the regulatory sector the regulation that is there for the aviation sector we have the directorate general of civil aviation this needs to be updated this needs to be motiv modified it should be well staffed and incentivized to reform so that is what is said so you get all the points over here and lastly with regulation it says that there is this dominance of the bureaucrats particularly the ies cadre and i think that's one of the biggest incentive for most of you, you to join the services so it's dominated by the ies at the top level at in fact all government departments but they have no knowledge technical know how of the business operations and this undermines the overall governance of the aviation sector so it should there should be some mechanism where the feedback of the uh, airlines of uh, the people who are operating all the stakeholders are taken into account so there is instead of mentioning this you can say holistic representation or multi stakeholder feedback right so something to that effect in the regulatory domain helping sri lanka more meaningfully i'm not doing this we have had enough of this thing india sri lanka relationships yes we can do about it so we can look at it this way but not now the way to control tuberculosis when this is the article which is actually a condemnation of uh, india abiding to abiding by the who regulations so who you know india has this national tb control program tb control program then under the under the influence of the who we revised our national tb control program so r and tcb so this is what the article says now i feel that from the point of view of exam what is the government doing for the regulation or for the eradication of tuberculosis or for controlling of tuberculosis naturally we need certain facts so here we get certain facts over here so about 1.5 million people every year die in the world because of the tuberculosis and in india we have 1400 persons every year who die due to tb right so this we have then it tells us about this programs and the shortcomings uh, that it is in primarily from the who focus okay if the if the question asks you about what is the government doing about this thing the tb thing right so here we have the pib which lists down the efforts or the efforts of the government for controlling tuberculosis right so this is to, the pib for 2014 but nothing major has uh, taken place so these are certain things that you can mention so one is this program over here then we have uh, the pro programmatic programmatic management of drug resistant tb then management of multi drug resistant tuberculosis then anti drug anti tb drugs move from schedule h to h1 right so all these activities that have taken place surprisingly i can't find the dots program which is mentioned over here right so if the government is saying these are the measures then these are the measures we don't have to really go beyond this so this i'll mention in the comment section okay the relentless march of the fpis foreign portfolio investors the foreigners who had invested in a country in various instru instruments be it stock market be it uh, fixed deposits be it bonds so they are exiting our country naturally they are exiting our country so why are they exiting the country now given the nature of questions in the mains examination this can be asked in your recent main as a current affairs type of a question okay so from that point of view you are required to read this now overall let me give you a brief this thing the basic thing is that let's say somebody from us is us currency is dollar so they get it exchanged to rupee because they have to invest in india right so they invested in rupees so 1 dollar is equal to how much it used to be around let's say they invested at 60 rupees or 65 rupees they had invested in a country now because of there being a risk of recession 
बिकॉज ऑफ इन्फ्लेशन इन्फ्लेशन इन यू एस ए द यू एस फेड से दैट वी आर इंक्रीजिंग द इंटरेस्ट रेट सो दे फील वाई डू वी हैव टू इन्वेस्ट इन इंडिया वाई डोंट गो बैक टू अर ओन कंट्री देन बिकॉज ऑफ द यूक्रेन वॉर दैट हेज टेकन प्लेस बिकॉज ऑफ द इन्फ्लेशन ऑफ द क्रूड प्राइसेस द रूपी इज डेप्रिशिएटिंग सो लेट्स ए नाउ रूपी इज लेट्स ए वाई सेवेंटी नाइन रुपीज सो फ्रॉम सिक्सटी फाइव रुपीज इट हेज कम डाउन टू सेवेंटी नाइन रुपीज दैट मीन्स वेन अ पर्सन फ्रॉम इंडिया वेन ई गोज बैक एंड वॉन्ट्स टू गेट बैक इन इन डॉलर टर्म्स नाउ ही विल हैव टू शेल आउट सेवेंटी नाइन रुपीज टू गेट वन डॉलर इंस्टेड ऑफ सिक्सटी फाइव रुपीज सो इवन इफ दिस पर्सन हैड अर्न मोर इंटरेस्ट ऑन देयर नेचुरली कमिंग टू इंडिया मीन्स मोर इंटरेस्ट दैट इज द रीजन बट द डेप्रिसिएशन दैट हेज टेकन प्लेस इन द करेंसी इज मच मच मोर So this is one big issue. Furthermore, the overall economic outlook right now, be it India, be it in India, be it in the world, is not very very positive. So that is the issue. You you really don't have to read. If this is fine, you can yes you can have a definition of the FPIs, but overall theme, if it is asked, it has to be asked in this way. And it 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 can be asked in the GS three GS three paper. Okay. Next, we have the status of China's Belt and Road Initiative in South Asia. I expect a question as to what are the objections India has with reference to Belt and Road Initiative, or should India be part of the BRI initiative? So again, here either way, if it is asked, you have to define it. Define the Belt and Road Initiative. You should know the pros and. Cons obviously from uh, India's this thing, and if it says why India should, then you have to give points in as to what are the advantages that India may accrue because of the Belt and Road Initiative. So that is one thing. Other thing is the counters to the Belt and Road Initiative. So India has been part of certain things. So one we have the Blue Dot Network, which is a certification program on investments that the. Uh, these countries are making so blue dot network then we have the most recently the P, g7 initiative known as the pgii right i somehow keep forgetting the full form of pgii the one second find you google it you find it for yourself uh, i'm not able to get it okay so yeah this is it now coming to this Ch china's uh, progress in other different different countries we have the break up over here so with reference to pakistan it says that uh, the there is this belt and road initiative that is moving from china connecting to europe it's a chinese led initiative it is a chinese led initiative where infrastructure would be created and in this the chinese are funding the projects they are providing the funds to the respective countries and this is being provided at commercial rates at market rates it is being provided and the obviously all these countries if you see if if, if you are connecting one belt one road of the maritime silk route via the sea if you go you will see most of these countries are not developed countries they are not having adequate resources so most of them are low and middle income countries so they will be the beneficiaries or whatever of the of the, of the projects that that are coming via the bri okay so they will get this money and they will invest in all this port making of the ports or this railway lines connectivity or even power electricity projects power projects that will take up in this country respective countries so this will come by the chinese money and normally there is a condition that the project would be made so this money would be used for the construction of the project these projects are normally constructed by the chinese companies only so this money actually flows back to chinese firms now since this is at commercial rates plus the capacity of these countries to pay back is not much these can these countries fall into the debt trap right so they fall into the 
dead trap over here. But researchers have suggested that this dead trap is fine. This thing is there. China is dead trapping. But it is also true that the low and middle income countries themselves are going to China for seeking fundings to secure loans because they were not able to secure loans from elsewhere. Now we have this again Belt and Road Initiative and in, imagine the map of uh, South Asia. So from Belt and Road Initiative there is a branch that is flowing southwards which is known as the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor which termi whose terminal point is at the Gwadar port. So this is one of the biggest projects and they say that the Gwadar port, Gwadar city would become a smart port city and will be the Singapore of Pakistan. So this project is there. Now the people of Gwadar is, are not liking it. They are Baloch nationalists, Baloch militancy. So because of this, there are certain problems. Local people also have objections to it. And there are concerns about Chinese companies over, overcharging this. And China, Pakistan is already into the debt trap. Next with Sri Lanka, we have uh, these projects that were given like the Hamban Tota project etc. Then East Coast Terminal project has been given, handed, was handed over to China. So East Coast was given, so the alternatively Western side was give, given to the Indian group. Then the Hamban Tota project they were not able to manage, they were not able to pay back. So it is known as the White Elephant and ultimately this was handed over this port was handed over to an, on a 99 year lease to chinese okay then with reference to afghanistan uh, afghanistan again there was an mou signed when uh, whatever the democratic government of afghanistan was there before taliban but after taliban and of, because of the war nothing much has taken up with maldives uh, during the time of abdullah yamin the previous president of Maldives who was uh, Maldives I hope you know this it is south of the 8 degree channel right so it is here it's strategically important so it was during his Abdullah Yameen's tenure this was taking place but later on after the election of the new president Soli the, there has been a pause who has uh, distanced himself from the BRI and he is advocating India first policy Bangladesh, it seems, is the best beneficiary. It has been able to balance its interests with China as well as India. Uh, so diplomatically, they have been successful in this regard. Okay. Criticisms of Congress with reference to the GST. It says that the diamonds are taxed at 1.5% GST, while things of health insurance, etc., they are taxed at a higher rate. Right. So uh, criticism of the GST. Then we also have actually wait we'll connect this with this one so so the revenue secretary is saying that we need to rationalize the gst so we can correlate the two over here panel suggests increasing tenure of house committees this i'm discussing and this one i'm discussing you no know, i let's see if we can connect it with social justice so panel suggests increasing tenure of house committees. Now remember I keep saying this, effectiveness of parliament is very very important. Now within parliament, there obviously within parliament and within any legislature, in, in parliament itself, there are two houses, Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha. Each house, naturally there are members, members cannot work all the time. So this work is delegated to various committees. So there are various small small committees that are working, department related, finance related. So there are committees that are operating in the respective houses of the parliament. So we can have a question in the GS2 which asks us about the role of committees, the problems and issues of the parliamentary committees reforms etc right so about effectiveness and so on this theme a question can be taken up we have to be prepared on this now naturally we have these committees they uh, look at the government related work what is taking place an issue associated with uh, the particular committee that they do it the committee has representation of all the political groups 
and they follow a consensus based approach so be it bjp be it congress be it aam aadmi party which tmc so since they, this take place in the closed doors there is a scope for negotiation and scope for bringing two opposite parties on same common plane so consensus based approach and bringing everybody on the same you will find consensus they will find agreement general agreement in the normally in the functioning of the committees which is not possible in public layer or when obviously in a larger grouping larger setting okay so role of committees importance then coming on to the issue of shortcoming so one shortcoming is that the committees are you know the members change every year now these members imagine the politicians elect getting elected for the first time they don't have the competence of maybe health maybe finance whichever committee they have been part of so by the time they get their competence they are asked to a new committee is formed so they may be move to the other committees right so competence of the members that is not there plus by the time they are trained they are moved they move to the different because of the elections the manner in which the appointments take place so what is what this is saying is with reference to rajya sabha a committee formed by the a panel formed headed by former general secretary of rajya sabha ppk rama rama charyullu so he suggested that the tenure of this panel should be increased tenure should of the panel should be increased given the time period so at least one hour should be there then there should be a dedicated hour for listing of the works of the committee discussion of the reports that have been prepared by the committees then what it does not say but it should be there there should be programs for training and capacity building of the legislators who are working in the committees then the reports of these committees should be more accessible accessible to the different stakeholders as well as the general public then it tells us about something about administrative we won't understand so about streamlining of the secretarial work so whatever routine so there is committee and then there are administrative people who are doing the administrative work so he says that most of the work should actually take place at the lower levels so the work should be delegated so that it should not be at the secretarial level it should be solved at sorted at the lower levels only so that will be more efficient okay so this is there moving on to the next article bit to delink the backward sections from the elite concerns okay this is prime minister's um, modi's uh, political this thing now what uh, he, let me put it what he's saying and then let me put it other way so he says that we should not look at the society we should not look at the minorities as monolith so monolith means that is something that is made of a single stone monolith lith means stone so he says that within a society within a community there are people who are of different sect there are different sect for example uh, different sect different caste Uh, within the caste also there will be people who are elite there will be people who are impoverished poor so it it the political people at, at least from the bjp should not expect the expect the society sh- sh- that they will act in a particular way so within the society also need, they need to identify the opportunities okay Uh, like with reference to this andhra pradesh the hyderabad thing so they are saying that uh, his recent moves are in favor of pasmanda muslims then on uttar pradesh having a minister from the non sayed category right so from a non elite category they are having this so that should be that so that is what he is saying now what i was thinking was it's a bit ambitious society should not be treated as monolithic there is lot of diversity so from that perspective i don't know i couldn't i am still working on it so let's see society should not be treated as monolith there is diversity there are different groups of people so maybe from that perspective we can think on this center asks states to boost paddy sowing okay 
so there was this group of ministers so there was this group of ministers so representatives ministers of the states were there and there was the representative of the center mr piyush goel right so mr goel the cabinet minister was there so they were talking about the issue of the food security so state food ministers and food, nutrition security of india so they were deliberating on this subject now if you look at this closely this is an example of cooperative federalism right cooperative federalism where the center and states are working together and by the way agriculture is a state subject but center is giving certain directives so telling them that you have to boost the paddy sowing further obviously this is not really the season but he is saying that we should in the future in the next season ravi season we should focus on sowing more of this wheat because there is wheat shortage taking place across the world so when the season comes we have to take this opportunity then they also deliberated upon the issue of use of fortified grains fortified rice so kerala says that we don't have a problem with giving fortified rice and uh, fortified rice but it would be better if we can use indigenous varieties of rice which are naturally which naturally contain nutrients so that is what it it is saying now just this part itself fortified rice fortified food so this is again a theme that can be taken up in the mains examination government has given lot of focus then there were certain food min certain ministers who have raised the raised the issue of cultivation of millet said mill millet should be promoted so center has said that we will consider replacing rice with ragi and other millets in fact i think in the year 2018 there was a dedicated question on the millets so that year was supposed to be for the millets promotion of the millets okay so already question has been asked but it can be again asked taken up then the other issue that they took was that the nationally uh, when we they when they are implementing this uh, food distribution so they are the food is procured by the center and then given to the states so states are purchasing food from the center so states have not been able to you know submit their bills money that they owe to the center so mr goel pulled up the states for not submitting their food bills so he said if certain states need the help of the cag then it can also be provided and here we don't we find that telangana west bengal rajasthan did not send their members so trs telangana different party west bengal non bjp rajasthan non bjp so they were not part of this so again an example of challenges with cooperative federalism then there is something known as national food security act which was to eliminate hunger so this law was introduced now for implementation of this nsfa there is a nfsa national food security act there is a ranking that has been formed so example of co competitive federalism so here orissa the state of orissa had secured the first rank right orissa had secured the first rank over here followed by uttar pradesh andhra pradesh so if, if such questions are asked so you should be prepared for this also but don't expect because prelims is a, a long away from now okay and now talking about the index what all things it has it ha it is basically talking about the efficiency of the targeted public delivery scheme so tpds t that stands for targeted public delivery distribution scheme rather than and it does not talk about malnutrition or the the things that are done by the government to address the issue of hunger it is not about that it is only about the implementation of the public distribution system so it's only about that so this is again this can be taken up as a pointer for your pre so it has is basically focusing on certain things like fair well in digitization aadhar seeding point of sale installation e point of sale installation etc a uh, more time to respond to centers policy on disabled okay so ministry of social justice uh, in, within this there is a department known as department of empowerment of persons with disabilities so they are creating this draft policy now nationally 
what are the issues and constraints associated with the draft policy so this can be a theme what are the features of the proposed policy and then it tells us about the shortcomings so here is this article from the print i am actually exceeding my time so yeah, here is this article so this is this will be good enough one second yeah so this gives us everything we want it tells us about the key elements of the tpds then it, uh, sorry of the disabled policy the priorities and then it tells us about the shortcomings that is it is not focusing on monetary implementation it is stating what has already been mentioned previously right so it is then it keeps it exempts the central police forces from purview of job reservations so giving a go back to the concept of reasonable accommodation right so all these points are given so you can prepare this also the navy eyes government route to buy carrier based jets right okay so these are aircraft carriers naturally they will need they will need fighter planes also so now we have indigenously developed ins vikrant then we had imported i think this was during the congress time ins vikramaditya so all these are going to require fighter planes so where will we get them we will have to import apart from of course the tejas plane so for this they say that the navy is going via the government route we'll take up this example of rafale so that rafale was via the government route so government has a contract with the french and the french says that we will supply and then they get it from the rafale and then we get it navy gets it and that is the government route so most likely we are going to have these jets coming from france and usa so either the rafale plane the modified rafale planes or the f18 super hornet aircraft the one that we saw in the top gun top gun movie the new one and here again it it is believed that the top gun movie had this fighter plane because it was kind of a soft push to india to get this planes okay so this is it now coming to the international section so sweden finland signed protocol to join nato await ratification fine so this is a development that has taken place china backs pakistan in opposing g20 meetings in kashmir somewhere it would be about that things are normalized in the kashmir and all those things especially after in the in the aftermath of the article 370 issue all the criticisms etc so pakistan and china had a problem so now they are opposing this g20 meetings to take place in kashmir manila beijing ties are about more than the conflict so i'll tell you what is the conflict the conflict is the issue of the south china sea so china claiming that the entire south china sea as their region so this is philippines philippines capital manila so naturally their share of the south china sea was also affected because of the chinese claim so that is what their premier is saying that it is not just about the conflict chinese foreign minister and blinken so us secretary of state they are going to have talks so let's see what happens what is the outcome of that now coming to the business speech so pmi pegs service growth at 11 year high so fine so services are yes, growing and it says inflation weighs down business confidence with just 9% for, firm forcing growth one year later okay first thing is what is this pmi why should we believe what is pmi so pmi is purchasing managers index it is not of the un or any body it's not an intergovernmental body but it is a private initiative so snp global so it is snp it is a survey based snp global india services so it is their index that has been so it is known as the pmi it is not a government it is privately done okay so they have found services growth at 11 year high that is one thing and they feel that the contact intensive services like restaurants etc to grow uh, maybe because uh, previously the consumer was avoiding it because of the covid related issues so now these sectors will go, go, grow so tourism travel shopping so these services will grow not really shopping coaching industry better example okay 
then naturally coming on to the inflation weighs down business confidence naturally if cost of things increases it's not just for the consumer even the business or the purchase manager of the business are also also procuring things the fuel is getting expensive the imports are getting expensive because of currency depreciation so because of all of this inflation the business confidence is low they don't feel that they are going to see growth one year from now right so this is there now naturally rupee falls to 79.33% and as a result of this current account deficit is to widen right so we have all this what are the reasons for the cat uh let me put it this way from the exam point of view we can have the key constituents of the key parameters of the current account deficit or we can also have a question on the key constituents of the balance of payment so from that line then what are the reasons for the widening of the current account deficit or what are the reasons for the depreciation of the rupee what measures are ought to be taken so from that line we can prepare now gst thing i had explained now moving to this article just this one private vehicles retail sales continued to see strong demand so passenger so passenger vehicles so these are private cars only. okay so they are likely to increase and this could be because of the un lockdown and all those things so this right so because of all of this it is likely to increase and it is also an indicator that the automobile sector is likely to do well it is also an indicator of prosperity people have money to these are capital expenditures these are these can be avoidable but people are buying this so this is overall a good sign in that regard okay right so this uh, this is it from my side so this uh, concludes the session so thank you for streaming in i think it's a bit long today but anyways so this is it bye bye take care and all the best